You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Maximize Retirement with your host, Sharon Rolfe. Sharon inspires, collaborates, and motivates you to repurpose your skills with the potential to generate expansive possibilities. Her optimistic perspective and interactions incite a creative synergy. So please welcome the host of Maximize Retirement, Sharon Rolfe. Hello, I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe, and you are listening to Maximize Retirement, coming to you on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're here to inspire possibilities and purpose in retirement. I'm a retirement coach. I conduct What Do I Want to Do in Retirement Workshops, and my website is effortlessvitality.org. I've started uh, wanting to start my shows with gratitude. Three things I'm grateful for today. Uh, We've got sunshine here today um, all day long, so I'm grateful for sunshine because it helps all things grow. I'm grateful for the air that I breathe and uh, what would we do without water. So those are pretty big things, but I bet Dr. Haas is going to be talking about that today. My guest is Dr. Elson Haas, and our topic is five keys to staying healthy. Dr. Haas is a longtime integrative family physician who is the founder and director of Preventative Medical Center of Marin, an integrative center in San Rafael, California. And he's the author of a dozen books on health, nutrition, and detox. So in retirement, staying healthy is a pretty high priority. So welcome, Dr. Haas. And what's your three grateful things today? Oh, grateful. Anyways, I've been using this quote I send out on Thanksgiving um, since I talk a lot about attitude is uh, gratitude is a grateful attitude. Mm. So I feel blessed every day that I have my health and that I have the wherewithal to really keep my exercise and sleep and, and all my aspects of staying healthy in play. And you know, food is my biggest challenge, but I, I do pretty well with that. So I just mm-hmm. feel blessed every day. And, uh, you know, part of my my life motto now is to keep love in my heart, to say yes whenever I can, but be able to say no. And that's to, mm. like, wine or my chocolate chip cookie or whatever that no is, too. <laughs> it might be, might be somebody asking me to do something that doesn't feel right, so... Mhm. Mhm. I I heard somebody talk about um the difference it made to say yes to life just in the last week and it was a powerful message uh testimony that this uh lady gave. So, um I think a lot of us need to say yes more often, don't we? I think so. Well, yes, but you need to have what you want to say yes to. It's just like when you you know have a list of the foods that you know are good. Like even when I speak to young people, but it, you know, in schools, but uh, even for elders, it's like have a list of those foods that you know are good for you that should be part of your everyday diet and make sure you have those around and, and those are your go-to foods. So, you know, saying yes to the, to the right foods for you is a good beginning because, you know, our nutrition is what we have the most power over, what we put in our mouths. And a lot of people hurt themselves and create disease because of the choices they make every day with the foods and the habits that they have. Mm -hmm. So you say we're going to talk about how you engage with five keys that make you tick or sick so we can be healthy and vital living to our full potential. So it looks like 
these five keys are mainly lifestyle, which you like you just said, we have choices over. And they're mostly common sense. You know, we don't have doctors talk to us about common sense that much. <laughs> mm-hmm. to us. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, call, I call myself a common sense doctor because good, good health care is mostly common sense. And it starts with, you know, it starts with each of us, you know. So it's not mm-hmm. about, you know, it's one thing when you're sick or in a crisis or, or injured, you know, there's an emergency. You know, that's when Western medicine can really be helpful. But most of the time, it's just, you know, treating symptoms with medicines that are not really aligned with the best health of our body. And, you know, we have to deal with the consequences of that, whether it's antibiotics, high blood pressure medicines, you know, cholesterol medicine, all these things. I mean, that, that's what I've seen over my 45 years in practice that our, our health and vitality is based a lot on, you know, what we talked about, just the choices we make every day. And that's we can really start to change. I mean, what my practice is and how I focus with people, which is more on prevention and health health support, is when people start to have beginnings of chronic disease, it might be now it's earlier than it used to be. It might be in the 30s and 40s where their blood sugar starts to get off, they're in pre or early diabetes, their high blood pressure is showing up, their cholesterol is high, they have beginning cardiovascular issues. An integrative approach to healthcare can really help start to reverse that. And it really, to me, makes a big difference versus uh, just prescribing a pill. It doesn't mean I don't prescribe medicines, you know, because you want to get the results. You want people's blood sh- blood pressure to be in a normal range because it affects their heart over time. But you, but if you can find natural ways to do that, that's, that's great. And you know, one of my mottos in healthcare has always been lifestyle first, natural therapies next, drugs last. But if someone's acutely ill, it's sometimes drugs first, then you figure mm-hmm. out well, why did they have the issue in the first place, you know? Mm-hmm. And, a, you know, a more integrative approach to healthcare, like a Western medicine approach, is, is basically when you don't feel well, the question would, might be what can I take to make this go away? What can I dry up my nose for my allergies, help my headache, help my backache? It's, it's you know, it's, it's, I won't even call it solution, it's treatment oriented to try and help reduce the symptoms and the suffering that people have, which is valuable, but it's not the answer. A more integrative question when you don't feel well or have any symptom is why is this present? What's this the outcome of in terms of my life? You know, or, you know basically, or what can I do for healing? What, what's needed for healing? And that's a different kind of question since mm-hmm. you know, I believe that our, our body mind is very much like a computer and we want to, if we ask ourselves in our deeper selves the right question, we may get some insight. We may get a, a different kind of solution than we, we might get just going to the doctor and saying, what, I, what should I take for this? Mm-hmm. So audience today, you might be interested to know how to prevent disease. And I know uh, I'm hearing as we are retiring that health is your one, are often our number one priority. So if health is our priority, then let's pay attention to how he, Dr. Haas, talks about preventing disease. So let's get into those five That's what Hippocrates Hippocrates said, health is our greatest possession. So Mm -hmm. we we want to maintain that because you know you could have all the money in the world and if you don't have your health life is not nearly as enjoyable and i see way too Mm -hmm. many people who retire Mm -hmm. you know i consider myself retired for years because to me retirement means you get to do what you want to do and i'm mostly (laughs) doing what i want that's i have gratitude for that because you know i Mm -hmm. enjoy still working with patients i enjoy still working with all my staff in my clinic in northern Mm -hmm. california and so it, you know, makes life, uh, you know, exciting. It's good to have things that you know reward you in, in various ways. Yes, yes. So, is are we ready to jump into those five keys, Doctor Huss? Yeah, let's go. In, let's go into five keys. Number one key is nutrition, and that means eat wholesome food and avoid junk and chemicals. Learn the difference between real food from the earth and from, you know, natural foods and treats, you know, cookies, candies, chips, uh, you know, sodas, all the things. And that's one of the things I work with children in schools on is that's one key message. There's food and there's treats. Most of our diet should be real food and we should have a little bit of treats. 
Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, get the four next keys when we come back. And um, we're going to find out what we look and feel uh, is based. What is it based on? So uh, stay tuned, audience. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. You are listening to Maximize Retirement on BBN Global Network, and this is your host, Sharon Rolfe, with my guest, Dr. Haas, and our topic today is five keys to staying healthy. We've covered the first key is nutrition. So what's next, Dr. Haas? All right. Well, of course, nutrition could be a whole show unto itself because finding a a balanced diet, and basically I'll tell people, I think one of the, some of the more important things besides what I said earlier is learn the difference between real foods and treats is, you know, really focus your diet around fresh vegetables, uh, you know, good protein, um, you know, a little bit of fruit, depending on the season, and a little bit of grains and beans and nuts and seeds, and, and, you know, we start there. All right, so the next key is exercise. And how many people have a year-round exercise program a weekly, I have a regular weekly program. I do different things on different days. Mm. I encourage people to have a balance of uh, stretching for flexibility, uh, weight work for tone and strength, and keeping the muscles because as we get older, the more muscle mass we have, the better our metabolism is, that we're more able to stay at a reasonable weight. And then some cardio, if you can do some cardio. Uh, depending on your body, whether it's, you know, stationary bike or elliptical or being outdoors and hiking and all that. You know, so when you do all three of those, you tend to have your body um, more in balance and relaxed. Hmm. So I often ask people, you know, and my, my patients when I see them or when I'm giving talks, is you know what the best exercise is? People will say, well, you know, hiking or running or swimming. I said, no, it's actually the one that you'll actually do. <laughs> because I have, t- if I have, I have too often, I have people, you know, trying to figure out what to do, but they, you know, they either don't like exer- exer- they don't like exercise or they're, you know, just not doing it. So what will mm-hmm. you do? And you know, or sometimes I'll say, like, if the Great Spirit came to you and said, "I'm taking you now, unless you start exercising an hour a day." <laughs> <laughs> what you know? What would you do? Mm-hmm. So I think it's important, and, and if, you know, if your body's more fragile, or you know, you're you're you have pain, you know, you still have to find things to do, whether it's stretching in bed, yes. you know, small weights. I mean, always. I mean, I know people who teach yoga in chairs. I mean, there's so many options. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I like to do. You know, I do. Uh, 
you know, I'm kind of, uh, what am I? I'm 71 years old. I don't take any Western meds. I exercise 8 to 10 hours a week. I do, uh, today I'm going to go, this afternoon I go to a a spin class. I do weights. I stretch and swim. I call it my spin and swim workout. I wrote about that in my Ultimate Immunity book. Uh, Tomorrow I'll play racquetball at lunchtime. When I see patients all day, I take an hour and a half break at, at lunchtime and go exercise. And that gives me energy, and it helps me have my clear mind and, and, and good energy all, you know, all afternoon when I'm seeing people. Um, Wednesday's a day off. Thursday, I go to the gym at lunchtime. Uh, Friday, I usually hike or do some gardening. Saturday, I go to the gym. I have two different gyms that I go to, so you know, I can be down at my office or up at my home and still go find oh. a workout spot. Uh-huh. Sunday's a little day of rest, but I'm often doing something. I'm going on a hike with somebody or... You know, enjoying it. So mm-hmm. that's my that's my plan. Okay. The next the next uh, key is getting proper sleep. That's a key problem in our culture, especially as we age. We don't tend to not sleep as well. Um, we need to learn about sleep hygiene. So on my website, elsonhaasmd.com, I have one of my courses, and it's a free course that you can uh, you you can click on and sign up and it's on a platform called Thinkific and it's a whole class of re- evaluating your five keys to staying healthy and then looking at that for sleep we're talking about learn about sleep hygiene for example a couple years ago I got a new mattress an organic mattress got all the electronics my TV my uh, clock radio stuff all out of my bedroom started mm-hmm. sleeping much better so I don't have electronics there. Doesn't mean I don't, you know, I mean, if you really have trouble, um, you know, you may want to just get off the electronics a couple hours before bed, you know, do mm-hmm. some kind of relaxation work, et cetera. But there's also a lot of natural remedies. Too many people in our culture are on uh, sleeping pills of a variety of course, either over the counter or prescriptions. And there's a lot of natural things that can help with sleep. And I use those a lot in practice. As a family doctor, fatigue and insomnia are uh, two of the most common problems that I see. You know, half of people don't sleep well. The other half don't have energy. A lot of times it's the same half. But, uh, you know, it's based, it's based on our outcome. You know, one of my mottos in healthcare is how we look and feel is primarily a result of how we live. That's why – and all – Everything that we do in our lives could contribute to being healthy and vital or being ill and, you know, not feeling well. So um, those are key. So sleep is the third key to staying healthy. Uh, Managing stress. Learning some techniques to relax your body. Learn how to take charge of your mind a little bit more. People don't understand that our mind takes over sometimes and it causes us to worry to fear, to doubt, and we don't need to necessarily do that if we can uh, somehow learn some techniques to allow our mind to rest. We are not our minds. I learned this a long time ago, studying meditation and everything back in the 70s, really, is that we Mm -hmm. are not our mind. Our mind kind of acts on its own, and I have people think about, you know, like when they were younger, lying in in a green meadow and looking up at the blue sky with the clouds floating by. The clouds are like your thoughts and your the, your mind is like the sky. So just, you know, a, a wise person won't engage with their mind as much. I mean, they'll observe it and they'll see what they, you know, what they mm-hmm. need to do or activities. There's so much going on. But we have gotten so mental in this last yes. you know, century particularly. So people need ways to, to do that. In my most recent book, Staying Healthy with New Medicine, New Medicine is, stands for N-E-W, Natural, Eastern, and Western, and those are systems that I incorporate in practice. But I have a whole section on stress and relationships. Some, many people's, people's stresses are either about, they're either about work, they're about money, or they're about relationships. Mm-hmm. So those are the main areas we need to address. And so I think we we're probably getting close to a break again, but you know let's talk about stress and how to get along with people and how to not get along in a fair way called fair fighting, and a lot of mm. people don't know how to do that. 
Mm. So, Dr. Haas, I heard you say that exercise is actually a key to energy. I I picked up on what you were saying there about if you want energy, then exercise is one of those keys. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about how we look and feel is primarily based on how we live. And your um, stay tuned with us for the rest of Dr. Haas's uh, keys. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 you're listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm Sharon Rolfe, your host with guests, Dr. Elson Haas. And we have gotten down to key number four, which is stress. What's key number five, Dr. Haas? Well, you ready ahead? Attitude. Mm. So but let's talk about stress a little bit more because I left you there. Oh, okay. uh, I mean, we have all kinds of stress. We have emotional, mental stress. We have financial stress. We have physical stresses like illnesses, uh, you know, travel stress for people who work and travel a lot, you know, family stress, spiritual stress. Are we really living and being who we re- truly are or are we, you know, not doing that? When we're in retirement age, you know, in my studies of cycles and life, I sometimes call myself a psychologist because my, my first book was called Staying Healthy with the Seasons, which is based on natural medicine and you know, conven- traditional Chinese medicine. Um, but I think the, the key is to, you know, tuning into really uh, what, we're, what we're doing. And as we get into our 60s, ideally we should be doing things that really fulfill us from a destiny level, from a spiritual level. They should help us feel good about what we're doing. But I mentioned before the break is that a lot of people don't know how to not get along. I have a section in my, you know, in the stress and relationships part of staying healthy with new medicine. It's called the art and practice of peacefully not getting along. Hmm. So do we know how to argue with somebody? Do we know how to work through kind of challenge we have without getting mad at each other or blaming each other or calling each other names or, you know, going to the, you know, each other's corner or, you know, married or, you know, coupled people, you know, just being mad and irritable. And you know how you get when you have a little, you know, skirmish with somebody that doesn't resolve. Well, I should have said this or I should have done that. <laughs> and it just kind of eats us up inside. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's really mm-hmm. a, a key area that we, you know, we should address. So learn how to 
have a discussion with rules, you know, like, I won't interrupt you. I'll repeat what I heard you say. I will try not to react and I will respond. That means the response, you know, learn the difference between reaction and response means that I've actually received what you said. I've heard it and I've thought about it a little bit, even if it's for five seconds. And now I'm responding to you instead of blocking it or attacking you back or blaming you for something. I see people do that all the time. And most, most people can't, uh, you know, have a disagreement without getting mad at each other and, and being upset. So that's really crucial in life. And we're not, see, all these things we're not really trained as children. You know, we don't, mm-hmm. we don't really have this kind of course, and that's really something we should address is more information that goes to young people so that we can learn. The, the earlier we learn healthy habits and the five keys to staying healthy, you know, the better our lives are going to be, very, very likely. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about attitude. Attitude, you know, I added in because it's not typically thought of, but it really is at the core, you know, of making good choices. When I, uh, when I was in my 20s and I became a doctor and I was like saying, oh, now I need to learn about health and healing, uh, I did a, a juice cleanse back in the mid-70s. And in 1975, I did a 10-day juice cleanse. Um, called the Master Cleanse, and it's lemonade, you know, fresh lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne pepper. I've written about it in my books. I've done at least 10 days of varying juice cleanses every year for this now, you know, 40 plus years. I do groups in my office. I'm teaching online uh, detox programs where people eliminate some of their habits. We can talk about that before before we finish. But I think that the cleansing has a value in, in, in health care, and I've seen it work for so many problems with people but to me that's one of the things that keeps me healthy brings my weight back to closer to normal um, my body feels great when I do it and so that's part of my my you know healing process and, and many people that have done it who have a positive experience and many people do so that's that's to me one of the keys but when I did that the first time I realized it mattered what I put in my mouth everything I eat becomes part of me and I made the different shift in attitude, which is, wow, this is the only body I have. I'm going to treat it with love. I'm going to take care of it. So what happens? All my five keys fell into place. I kept a positive attitude going. I started eating better. I started doing a more balanced exercise program. I started working on my sleep because I you know, didn't sleep that well, but I needed less sleep. When I cleaned up my diet, I didn't need as much sleep to to uh, to rest well and wake up naturally and feel good. And I also learned to manage my stress. I learned to calm down. I let exercise help me. I, I studied Tai Chi and you know some Qigong and started working with my body energy. So it really was a motivator for me. And when I kept my attitude there, we talked about at the beginning, remember? Keep love in your heart. Say yes when you can. Be able to say no. Learn to discriminate against things that aren't serving you and say yes to those things that are. And many of us, especially you know holiday times, but all, almost all the time, if we go shopping at a grocery store or we go, you know, we're going to a party, we're always tempted with what I call the substances that most people do. I have lectured around the country for, you know, 35 years. And when I do groups, especially when I talk about detox and cleansing and elimination diets and allergies and all those things that that, that whole area kind of entails, um, I realize that most people in my audiences, and this could even be healthy, 90 to 95 percent of them, I have this acronym I call SNACS. S N A C C stands for sugar, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, chemicals. Most people in our culture, and I think it's more than 90 percent, are habituated to caffeine, alcohol, sugar, cannabis now, other things that to try and manage their mood and energy. And when we don't do that in balance, we either don't sleep well and then we're tired the next day and we need more caffeine and sugar, or we're, you know, we're, we just, we get into this vicious cycle of poor energy and poor sleep. And we just, it's hard to get out of that. And that's what many doctors are dealing with. And there's not really a simple Western approach to deal with that. You know, yes, when people are fatigued, you got to make sure they're not anemic. They don't have low thyroid, low adrenal function, you know, but you know, most of us can come, come back to that. I have a program on my website. Um, the program is called Regain Your Natural Energy, and it's a guided program that helps people uh, take a week off of caffeine, alcohol, sugar, 
et cetera, and, and really come back to their own natural rhythm again. And that, to me, I think that's a, almost a first level of improving health. Yeah, I'm kind of t- uh, getting more and more amazed at how good uh, all this marketing and public pressure is about things to eat. And it's all just eye candy. It's mostly worthless. And and the appeal is so much huger than the actual how it makes you feel. Um, so it's uh, taking charge of that probably – would contribute to adding years to our lives. So when we come back, we're going to hear more from Dr. Haas. He talks about five elements also. So stay tuned. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. You're listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe, with our guest today, Dr. Elson Haas. And we've just been going over the five keys to staying healthy, and that was nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, and attitude. And um, Dr. Elson, you also mentioned that you've got five elements that um, – work with these five keys is that right well they they can correlate i mean the five elements is based on traditional chinese medicine and the understanding of the body is elements like you know water you know the elements are basically earth elements it's it's like you know what we have living on planet earth so there's fire water earth metal or air and and wood so those are five elements the first book i wrote is called staying healthy with the seasons where i have each section on different seasons which has an element so right now we're moving into winter which is the water element so sometimes things can be you know water can be excessive or you know there's there's challenges there so you know part of uh traditional chinese medicine is keeping the elements uh in balance in the body so we don't get too hot and dry so every every symptom and problem it's a different approach in Western medicine, you know, every symptom and problem may be tied to into, uh, you know, not enough fire, like people get cold easily or too much water or uh, a, a sogginess in the earth element. So it's a way, it's a different way of understanding the body. Um, and, you know, and that, it's a type of natural medicine and in natural medicine, we're looking at how do we get everything functioning well? I think really a deeper understanding uh, in my Staying Healthy with New Medicine book, I have a whole chapter and a, and a one-page chart on understanding causes. 
And in the center of that, so many, most, you know, you know scientists and doctors would say, oh, you know, germs are a cause of disease, inflammation is a cause of disease, you know, immune, you know, imbalances, but those are often second level. Those are a result of, you know, mm-hmm. what it really takes to keep the body healthy is keep your cells and your tissues vital. And to do, to have your cell, I have the cell in the center of my causes of disease chart. And, you know, the key to keep your cells healthy is to give it, give them all the nutrients you need, the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, and the phytonutrients, which are carotenoids and bioflavonoids and all these you know, thousands of, you know, biochemicals that are in, you know, in plants and on the earth and, and even in animals, too. And so that's one level is we feed the, the, the cells all the nutrients, and we need good digestion and assimilation for that. And the other side is to avoid the toxins, the metals and chemicals that get into our air, food, water, or we put on our body, on our skin with lotions or hair products. You know, these are have toxicity. They can interfere with cell function. They can interfere with enzymes. They can cause damage in the tissue. And they lead to inflammation. They lead to immune stress. They lead to lead to lead to degenerative problems. So, to me, the way we correct the body at the deepest level is to nourish it with good food and avoid what I said about nutrition. Avoid the junk and chemicals that you know we we're, we're all taking in. So, to you know, to me, that's really c- crucial to understand that because if we did that on a national level with millions of people half of people's problems would start to diminish and many symptoms mm-hmm. would go away. And this is what I do in practice. I mean, what are you doing every day? What's interfering with your health? And what I would suggest to people to do is, to, you know, to take away from here is to look at a few things that you might be able to, to let go of, you know, temporarily just to see if your body feels better. You know, we can call it a detox or we can call it an elimination diet. You know, in my groups when I do, and I'm doing one starting on January 9th, um, Wednesday, I'm on, um, doing it online on Zoom so people can join together, and it's really a uh, you know very progressive way to to do classes now. But I have people you know take a break from caffeine, sugar, alcohol, often wheat and dairy, any other foods that might be you know stressing their body, and we all kind of support one another in the process. And see how we feel. Okay, if you feel better, then later on and after a couple of weeks, you can start to bring those things back one at a time. And you say, okay, now that I gave up, you know, so that's how people have to find out if they're gluten intolerant or, or dairy sensitive. You know, they give it up for a couple of weeks and they don't do any foods that have that. They see if they feel better and then they try it again. You know, like one, uh, a portion, like if you're t- testing wheat, you might do a slice or two of bread or you might do some cheese or some yogurt or some milk. And you say, okay, how, body, how you feel? And a lot of times when you've taken a break from something, when you do it again, you feel, you really feel the, the effects of what, you know, what it's good, whether it's positive or negative. But a lot of times when you're doing things that are undermining your health, you're going to have a negative experience when you bring it back in. Yeah, I went on a diet here about a year and a half ago, and the first two weeks, he didn't have his... In- uh, eliminate anything. He just said, pay attention to how food makes you feel. And boy, that has not been a message we've heard very often at all. Mm-hmm. So, so when, like after the Thanksgiving dinner and we've eaten too much, um, well, it, it, any day, if you've eaten something and all of a sudden you feel like taking a nap in the afternoon, it might, are you saying it might right. be a link to what we just ate? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, one of my goals when I became a doctor back, you know, 45 years ago was I want to make a difference. I want people to be aware of what they do and how it affects them. And I'm still doing that, you know, decades later, because to me, that's where people are self-empowered to be their own best doctors. You know, I I teach a class called, I teach a class called being your own best doctor or healing from inside out. I'm doing actually a retreat in Costa Rica in in February, uh, you know, with a group called retreats unlimited. It's about really empowering people to take charge of their eating, to take charge of their, their, their lifestyle and really support people in that process. Um, and it will be, you know, food oriented. It's, you know, health looking at, you know, natural ways to take care of your body. How do we improve our health? Even when we're 50, 60, 70, 80, I work with people of all ages and any, any of us can improve our health with the right, with the right steps. 
<laughs> well, and think about it. back in high school, junior high, we we did learn about cause and effect, but we never did mm-hmm. apply it to our food and our health, right. did we? But one of the yeah. challenges is when we're young, our bodies are very forgiving. We can get away with a lot of junk. You know, not not as much. By the time we turn 30, we have to learn about discriminating and doing things that make our body feel good. So it's a good idea what you suggested. Pay attention to what you're eating and how you feel. Good. All right. Well, we're going to take another break here, and uh, we'll come back. When we come back, we'll ask Dr. Hospital the hardest question, okay? There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Okay, you are listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And Dr. Haas is here with me today talking about the five keys to staying healthy. And I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe. So um, was there anything more you wanted to say, Dr. Haas, about the five keys and five elements? I have uh, on my website, uh, elsonhousemd.com, I have an article that kind of ties them together where we're making some associations. Uh, and my, you know, my first book, Staying Healthy with the Season, really goes into the depth. No, I, I, th- I think uh, I kind of said what I, what I did. I mean, just finding the balance of elements. I don't know how many of your listeners, you know, see a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner or acupuncturist and, and see what effects. It's almost like doing a different diet and you see how you feel. You know, you go do a couple treatments and see uh, if uh, the acupuncture and balancing your energies has you feeling better and reducing symptoms. And it often works. It often works like that. So I would just have people, you know, encourage people to, you know, see, um, you know, an acupuncturist and try that if they haven't done it. Especially if they have aches and pains, you know, sometimes allergies, even hormonal imbalance, um, you know, you know, women with menstrual issues, uh, fatigue issues. I mean, a lot of things, you know, in my staying healthy with new medicine, I break down, you know, natural Eastern and Western medicines and look at their strengths and weaknesses and how to, uh, you know, what to use for what. And to me, you know, you know, if we have one, if we only have one system of treatment, if we only have our prescription pad as a practitioner, we're limited in the results we'll get and, uh, you know, what we, what we can offer people. That's what I found when I first became a doctor is that, well, I, yeah, this person has problems, but I don't know what, what, you know, what the diagnosis is or if there's a medicine to help people. And, you know, most of your listeners have gone to doctors before and they say, well, I'm not sure. Hopefully it'll get better in time. But, you know, a lot of things do get better with time, but a lot of things get worse in time, too. And so we have to kind of figure that out. But I think really just paying attention to your body and and uh you know your keys to staying healthy is really the beginning it's that's the key you know it's the key for all of us to maintain our health 
Well, I think it's a big disservice that we dump our problems, our health problems onto a doctor when it used to be I'm in charge of my health and a doctor supplements what I am doing to take care of my health. I've never been in a hospital a day in my life and um, and I'm also 71. So I, and, and I, I often are mistaken for a much younger person, but, um, and, and one of the doctors that, that got me way back in the seventies, um, thinking more about partnering with my doctor was, uh, Bernie Siegel and being a, um, uh, cancer right. surgeon right. and how he started support groups. And he could, he was making differences in people's lives back to what you were saying about <laughs> relationships being so key. So the hard right. question today starts with where, do we start if we aren't happy with how we are feeling or if we think we might have a health issue that needs healing? Well, the idea that what you said, uh, Sharon, is that, you know, if you find a doctor that will really work cooperatively with you to help you improve your health, uh, that's key. And the, uh, the last chapter of my Staying Healthy with New Medicine book, I have a section called the doctor-patient relationship. And it has to do with, you know, doctors, you know, having, you know, there's a mutual respect. You know, if you have a different belief system, and I have many people nowadays who just, they want, they don't want to just have somebody turn immediately to a prescription drug for them. They don't want to take them if they don't have to. And, you know, a lot of times people are taking things more than they really need. But ideally, if you can find a doc that respects your time, they run, you know, they'll try and run on time as best they can, that respects your belief system. System that doesn't put you down because you say I want to take vitamins. Oh well, why would you waste your money? You know, I mean, there's a lot of doctors who, now, honestly, would be ignorant about you know nutritional therapies or natural therapies, but they'll comment on it because it's not something they know. They'll say, you know, and they know Western medicine, and so you know if you go to somebody who knows more natural medicine or works with supplements or you know works with you know acupuncture or, or Chinese herbs. You know, you're going to get some, you know, you you can try that. But if, you know, you're really sick, I mean, if I'm really hurt or something like that, you know, I'm going to use Western medicine. That's good. Or if people are acutely ill. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, the, you know, what what works best for what? And you want, ideally, the safest, effective, least invasive mm-hmm. uh, kind of treatment. So where do we start then? We, you said to start with a doctor who um, respects our time and our beliefs. Yeah, who you you know you, you know I have a whole section in the, in, the, in that chapter. You know, shared beliefs, mutual respect, uh, you know, kindness. Uh, you know, there's like you know twelve different attributes that are part of you know healthy relationships. They'll work with you cooperatively. They won't judge you or put you down. You know, a lot. Of, one of the biggest issues I see with patients who are dissatisfied with doctors is because doctors proclaim. Uh, a problem. You're, you're going to have this for life. You need to be on this medicine for life. And they're very not very optimistic with people. Mm-hmm. Since I believe mm-hmm. attitude is, is is crucial, I mm-hmm. want to get you know. And I believe that our imagery, the thoughts that we and the, that's what mm-hmm. Bernie Siegel worked with with cancer therapy. When people had a negative image of something, they had a lot more side effects. You know, mm-hmm. when they had a positive image, it's something would really do. So when I first started practicing, it was interesting. I, I wanted to be very responsible, so I would tell people, like TV commercials now, all the side effects that something might have. So be careful about them, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I realized that I was feeding them negative stuff. So now I say, because any you can read about any drug in the PDR and, and have three pages or ten pages of all the possible side effects of it. So every drug has potential risk there. But I said... Side effects can occur, but they're very rare. Really what I want you to think about, like if you have to take an antibiotic for bronchitis or sinuses, that these, this medicine is going in your body, you're going to handle it fine, and it's going to help kill off this germ so that you can use your energies you're using now to fight this to help heal your body. So I will, mm-hmm. you know, I will give them an imagery that's much more conducive to healing than to a more negative you know, outcome. Mm-hmm. Pretty amazing. Um, I and I'm surprised. It, it how comes often... back to common sense. It's common sense. Remember, we started yeah, our interview I... with common sense medicine. 
<laughs> and the, one of the things that has, um, I guess, really thrown a curious wrench into all this medicine is how often when they're doing studies that the placebo effect actually helps heal some people when all it was was a fake pill. So right, right. that sure gets well, that's you what, thinking. That, that's- that's why that's so, why I use the positive imagery because that's adding that's taking your fifty percent placebo effect and yeah. adding that to the healing process versus you know undermining it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Okay, so thank you for listening with us today. Where you've got one more section here, and I think uh, Dr. Haas has given us something to think about today. So uh, come back as we wrap this up, and we'll tell you more how to get in touch with us. Okay. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Okay, this is Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and this is your host, Sharon Rolf, with her guest, Dr. Haas. So we've covered a lot of ground today, Dr. Haas. Um, how do we find integrative physicians like you and if we feel like we're doing what we can and aren't getting better? Well, if you... So first of all, it's, it's particularly hard to find a, a, a more alternatively oriented or integrated physician who takes insurance and Medicare. I'm one of the. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I may be the only one that I know of that does that. And it takes you know a lot of extra work, and you know you have to kind of do more mainstream, but with added other things. So a lot of the thing, a lot of the things that we do that improve health are really up to the individual patient as well. And I see a lot of new patients. Most doctors' practices are closed because they they diagnose disease and put met people on medicines, and they just keep them on there, and they need to be managed. And there's enough people with crises that happen. I'm always improving people's health, so I, they don't need to see me as much. So I, I, I do a lot of you know new patient consults and help people improve their health. Way to uh, go. If you look, you know, typically, if you look in the health food store, natural, you know, the natural magazines, most big cities have several uh, doctors. You have to look around and ask. You can uh, ask in the supplement department of your of your health food store if you want somebody who knows nutrition and supplements. But a lot of times they'll refer you to a naturopath or a, you know an acupuncturist because there's not that many medical doctors, but there are some 
who do, uh, you know, functional medicine is another term for some doctors who work that, integrative medicine. But, you know, if you if you can afford it, if you've maximized your retirement and you're keeping your health together, then, you know, you may be paying out of pocket for some of these services. But, again, you don't need to have that be your primary doctor. You can go for somebody for a consultation and work with you on your diet, your supplements, your exercise, and, and see about improving your health. So, to me, that's really, you know, where you begin. And, you, you know, as I say, you may have to invest a little bit in your health from that point of view. Cool, cool. Yeah, I could I could understand that. So you're saying look in our alternative, um, our health food stores, uh, maybe also you look for the functional medicine uh, category. Yeah, yeah. yeah functional yeah. medicine, natural medicine, alternative medicine. Um, but, you know, you ask around. I mean, most people, you know, friends at work, family, or, you know, or the health food stores just go online. I, you know, I want to you know, a health-oriented doctor that takes insurance, you might find, you know, somebody coming up that way. Cool. So, you know, to me, to me, we maximize retirement when we keep our health together and we start living a healthy life and we go from there. Because that's, you know, to me, that's the beginning <laughs> of, of good health. And, when, you know, we talked about through the whole show, our health starts, you know, with each of us and how we take care of ourselves. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to have people... Uh, be able to visit my website and learn more about the five keys to staying healthy and much more specifics than we talked about. And mm-hmm. then also, if you're having issues with caffeine, alcohol, sugar, other substances, uh, you know, and you don't have the energy and sleep and vitality you want, you know, then I have, you know, a good program for that, or I can support you in your elimination diet and detoxification. And, you know, just really, it's all about improving your health and keeping your, you know, your sharp mind, sharp body, and, uh, you know, staying healthy. That's my, my motto. Cool. So, um, Dr. Haas, it's his um, website, E-L-S-O-N-H-A-A-S-M-D.com, at Preventative Medical Center of Marin, M-A-R-I-N, dot com. And he's mentioned several books that he's written. And my website is effortlessvitality.org, where there is a free info introduction to my workshop, What Do I Want to Do in Retirement? And uh, I also have a store on Etsy called Quilted Petunia. Now, next week, our guest is Dr. Sandra Barrett, and she co-wrote with Dr. Haas uh, Ultimate Immunity. So we're going to hear some more good things about keeping our self healthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So our our topic next week is healing is an inside job. And I hope you come back and listen to us next week too. Thank you. This has been Maximize Retirement with host Sharon Rolf. If you can dream it, it is possible. Tune in next week as Sharon reminds us that living from the heart and creating a new and meaningful life is within your reach. Here on Sharon Rolf's Maximize Retirement. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.